everyone, Shelby Thomas with you today. On behalf of Simple Pleasures, I'm going to show you how I made this card, the three parts of it, the background, coloring the flowers, and how to emboss the sentiment. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some watercolor paper onto my bamboo cutting board. And I'm going to adhere my watercolor paper to the bamboo using painter's tape. And I like to de-stick the painter's tape just a little bit because it can be really sticky especially the scotch brand so now that my watercolor paper is stable on my bamboo cutting board I'm going to spritz the paper with water these wonderful color bursts are water crystals they're very intense and they're reactive with water so you can see once the crystals has hit the water on the paper it starts to break apart or disperse and you can see some green in there you can see blue the wonderful thing about these crystals is they have multiple colors in them which is fascinating to watch how they just do their thing on the paper so I'm now coming in and I'm spritzing directly onto the watercolor crystals or the color bursts that are on the watercolor paper and moving the bamboo cutting board around so I can get better coverage of the paper with the watercolor crystals and you can see there's a lot of pooling around the edges of the tape and the paper so I'm going to come in with a paper towel and just suck up a little bit of that extra water so anytime you have too much pooling or too much of a color or something you don't like just touch a little corner of paper towel on it and it'll suck right into it so you can either set this aside to dry oh hey I'm coming in with some extra color I forgot I did that so I'm just tapping in some extra yellow I thought it needed a little something something a little more color to it so I just added additional color right onto it so you can either set it aside to dry or use your heat gun and for expediency sake today I use the heat gun so I'm just now tapping in some clean water off my brush to give the splattered look you can also like I did there just put in a drop it directly with the paintbrush and I'm going to set this aside to dry because um, with the watercolor droplets I like the look of it when it fully does its job so I'm going to remove the tape gently and carefully and there was the background so now we're going to move into coloring with the Zig watercolor markers these are fabulous they are a watercolor pen that is reactive with water hence the term watercolor now what I like to do is I'm using the brush direct to paper I'm not using any additional water at this point and I'm filling in the background because I'm going to eventually cut this with the coordinating die and I don't particularly like a bright right bright white rim around my coloring so I'm just going to come in first and do my background and just as a personal choice I like to do my backgrounds before I do my foregrounds because if I mess up my background I haven't wasted all of that energy and time coloring the foreground only to ruin it with um, a background that doesn't look so awesome so now I'm going to come in I'm going to do the stems and I'm just flicking lightly and just doing very light strokes with this marker the brush is more like a paintbrush than you would find on the Tombows or other types of watercolor markers. They're very flexible. You can get a very thin line. You can get a very thick line like you saw with me doing the background. And I'm just adding in a touch of darker brown to give a little bit of dimension to the stems. And now I'm going to blend it out a little bit more between those two colors with the first color that I used and I'm just going to come in with one solid color of green and just do where I believe that I want to see some um, green on the leaves now I'm going to start coloring the flowers and there's multiple ways to lay down the color or put the color in and I'm going to do the centers first it's lighter than the reds that I'm eventually going to come in with and if I put that in last well you couldn't see it so I'm going to put the lightest color down that I'm going to leave exposed down first so the first thing I'm going to show you to color is if you've taken one of my Copic classes I'm going to lay down dark to light so coming in with a darker red and now with a mid-tone red and the difference between obviously these and Copics is it's water based so it stays wet a little bit longer so you can you have a, a longer open time to blend 
So now I'm coming in with even a, a lighter shade of the red, which will, will create my shadowing and my shading with these markers. You definitely don't have to have three colors to create the shading look with these markers. And with the next couple of flowers, I'll show you how to create that without um, three coordinating color pens. And the system with Zig is not set up like the Cobics where there's multiple colors that coordinate together. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going to lay down the lightest color all over the flower first. And then I'm going to come in with uh, the darker reds. And what will happen is that it'll start blending on the paper because that ink, the lighter color red, is wet. So as soon as another wet color hits, it's going to start the blending process. So this time I also came in with a mid-tone, a middle color red, and blending that darker into the light and then coming back in and finishing up that little blend. So what I'm doing here is taking the darkest color that I have and I'm putting in it behind the flowers because it has less light so that's why I'm putting in just the darkest color behind on those flowers. And here I'm going to use just two colors. I came in with the lightest first and then the dark over it. And you can look and see that it's already blending. And it, same thing here, I went in with the dark first and now I'm blending out with the lightest color. So two different ways to accomplish that same look. And now I'm just using the middle color red that I had. I'm going to come blend that out with the lightest red. So here I'm just using the two markers like I did in the previous flowers. The first two flowers I used three colors. The second two I used just two. And on this one I'm going to add just a touch of that dark in there, but you can get away with just using the two colors. Now I'm going to try opposite and having the lighter color towards the center. So I'm coming in with my dark first and laying that down and then I'm going to blend that out with the middle color and then I'm going to join the two with an even lighter color. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can play with these markers. There's absolutely no right way to do it. There's not just the Shelby way to do it. There's your way to do it. Whatever way works best for you is the right way to do it. So don't think just because I do it this way, this is the only way to do it. So when you're playing with these pens, just have fun with it. Experiment, see what you can create. They're very easy to blend. They're very intuitive to use. So now I'm coming in again with the yellow and I'm going to pull some of the red into the center of the flower to create a little bit more of an orange and to also kind of soften those lines that I created with those pens to begin with. So here's the dark and you'll see me doing a lot of flicking but I think that's more primarily because I'm um, spent a lot of time using Copics but you can scrub these, you can um, flick them, you can do circular motions, you're not going to harm the nibs, there's not going to be any damage to them, so whatever way works best for you. And what I'm doing off to the side is if I, on my lighter colors, if I pick up some additional colors, I'm scratching it off so that I can get a clean color to go back in with. And that's all that you need to do is just scratch it off, clean it off, and it's good to go if it picks up an additional color. So I'm just going to add in a touch of the darkest and you can see on that top flower how the red and yellow together made more of an orange look. So have fun with these markers and play, play, play. So now I'm going to move on to embossing. We're going to use the Tim Holtz ruler. We're going to use the Versamark pen, some embossing powder, and some anti-static. So what I'm going to do is I've cut this vellum already down and I'm going to put some of the anti-static stuff down so that my embossing powder doesn't stick in areas that I want and I'm using grid paper which is difficult to see on the video and I'm going to line up my ruler in a straight line and this Versamark pen is the same thing in a pad but in pen form so I can get very fine details. So I'm going to now add the gold embossing powder to it and I like to do one thing at a time 
So in case I mess up, I haven't wasted all that time, and then I can be a little bit more detailed in my work if I take my time and just do it step by step. But you, of course, can do it all three of these steps at one time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat emboss it. And now that it's heat embossed, I'm coming back and doing the other um, top edge or bottom edge, however you want to look at it. Laying down the Versamark using the heavier end of the Tim Holtz ruler. It has a beveled end and it has a more solid end. And I use the more solid end when I have this pen up against it. And the craft mat I'm using today is that beautiful imagination craft craft mat, which is blue. And now that I've stamped, stamped the sentiment, I'm coming in with the last thing of embossing powder. And I'm going to heat set this. And voila, my sentiment is done. Done in gold on top of vellum. So thanks for visiting today and hope you learned a thing or two. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thank you.